Hey, so Jeff, pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you as well. Uh, first, I want to give you a congratulations on your successful campaign. Thank you very much. We're very excited about it. Awesome. I, you know, um, I wanted to start with, you know, why did you want to start your own studio? That's a great question. I think the impetus behind what we're doing is the Jobs Act, and I don't know if you're familiar with that at all. But it's, it's uh, equity crowdfunding, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what we use to raise our million dollars, um, our first million dollars worth of investment. And what it is, is prior to the JOBS Act, um, the only people that were allowed to invest in startup companies were uh, wealthy individuals and venture capitalists. Like you had to have literally, your net worth had to be at least a million dollars, or you had to make at least $200,000 a year Okay, and if you didn't meet those criteria, then you weren't qualified. You weren't allowed to invest in these companies. It didn't matter whether it was Facebook and you know Mark Zuckerberg was your next door neighbor or your brother, you know, or um, you like you were not allowed to invest in it. And those laws have recently changed, and so that's what we're doing for the first time in history. Anybody has the opportunity to invest in a startup company, and so. We thought that, you know, for, we come from the entertainment industry, our, our previous company was Moby TV, right, where we won an Emmy for uh, innovation and television, but we thought that the opportunity in entertainment is so remarkable, just because the fact that you can have fans invest in the company, and then we can create a movie or a TV show, a virtual reality experience or whatever, and then when we go to bring that to market, the fact that we've got people that are financially invested, right? So if this movie is successful, you can make money, right? And more than that, the fact that you're emotionally invested, right? You put you invested, and you got to see, you know, when we optioned the script, and you got to go behind the scenes when we were making the film, and you got to do an online hangout with the cast and crew and all that sort of stuff, means that when that movie comes out, that audience is already like excited to see it. And they're gonna see it on opening day, and they're gonna bring their friends, and they're gonna talk about it on Facebook. And so that power of having an invested audience in your product is a huge competitive advantage. Um, as well as being a lot of fun. <laughs> and so I think for those two reasons, you know, that's, that's what kind of got us. The Jobs Act passed this idea, which has been around forever. I mean, a lot of people say, oh my gosh, like, why hasn't anybody done this before? And the answer is, is that it was never possible until a few months ago. We, were, we, we launched our campaign on May 16th, which was the first day that it was legally possible. The laws went into effect. Oh, okay. So, all right. So, built-in audience. And also breaking through that whole job stack thing was kind of like the main motivation. Yeah, I mean, it's really, you know, for us, like I said, it's the most fun company mm -hmm. that I've ever worked with, you know, but the, the fact that there's also like really solid business foundation, the fact that we are creating movies and TV and VR with a legion of fans as the owners gives those uh, a competitive advantage when they hit the marketplace. And so, you know, that's that's really what it is. I mean, we we believe that what we can offer our investors is two things. One is a financial return, right? This is a swing for the fences, right? You know, most startup companies fail, and we're very upfront with people. Like, this isn't like a safe investment or anything like that. You could lose all of your money. Mm -hmm. But the ones that succeed when you invest at this stage can change the world, right? And can have enormous financial returns. And so. So that's part of it, is that's a little bit from a financial standpoint like buying a lottery ticket, right? It's, you know, it, anyway, if we're successful, it, it could be worth a lot of money. But the other part of it is the ability to take, you know, to bring fans in, to kind of open the gates of Hollywood and allow them to come along for the ride, you know, both in the sense of a startup company. Like, if, have you ever worked in a startup company or? If you ever had, like, it's an amazing thing because at its core, what it is, is it's like a few people and it's us against the world, right? And it's like, you know, it's, it's the ultimate, like, underdog story because you don't have any money, you don't have any reputation as a company, like, as a new company trying to do something. Especially what we're trying to do has never been done before, right? So there's no path, right? And, uh, but it's, it's intoxicating, right? You know, and it's these, these ups and downs. I mean, we have invested our, you know, my, my job, my career, <laughs> my reputation, a lot, of, you know, money, all that sort of stuff into this. 
And one day, everything is amazing, you know? And it's like, oh my God, we're gonna rule the world someday. And then the next day, it's like, oh my God, we are gonna crash and burn spectacularly. <laughs> and so that ride is really fun. And so to be able to allow people to come in and be a part of this, and, and you know, our fan owners have a lot of pride in the fact that we broke the record, right? We're, we're, we're setting the bar for these new jobs at company. Um, and then the other part of it is from the entertainment standpoint. The fact that you get to get behind the scenes and see like what is the process for making a movie and how does all that work and get that sort of backstage access we think is really cool and fun for people so you know i would say some people are in this because of the financial part of it and they've looked at it and they're like wow you know this is really smart for my financial portfolio i want to take a swing but a lot of people are in it just because like wow this sounds like fun you know it's going to be a, a, a fun time so okay and you know Given that this is a movie studio and all of the reboots and remakes and adaptations, <laughs> do you think it'll be an uphill battle to create and produce films from original scripts? Do you intend to go more original or also follow into the adaptation route? You know, so from our standpoint, we believe that because we are a fan-owned studio, that we have more power probably than anybody to think outside the box and create original stories and tell original stories. Um, and have original characters and, and all that sort of stuff. And so, you know, the reason there's so many sequels and reboots and all that sort of stuff is because the studios, I should say the industry, is conservative. Mm -hmm. And they know that if they launch Batman versus Superman, so many people are gonna see it, right? Like, those people are gonna come, there's no question. It doesn't matter if the movie's good or bad, right? They're gonna come and see it. And so it's, it's a safe bet. Whereas if, if there was a completely original property, right, around some uh, new character, it may be amazing, but you just don't know if people are going to come see it or not. And so studios are afraid of that risk. And so that's why you see so many. And this has really changed over the last 10 or 15 years. I was reading a great article that said, if you go back like 15 years ago and look at the top 10 films, they were all original stories. Mm -hmm. You go look at the top 10 films 2000, the last few years, all sequels, reboots, franchises. And so um, anyway, so again, that core idea of Legion M, the fact that our fans own the company and we've got a fan base to start off with means that we've got a lot more latitude to tell these original stories because we know that these people are going to come see the movie because it's their movie, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so, you know, given all of that, so are you going to, are you going to like kind of lean more towards the sci-fi, fantasy, and superhero genres even if it is original because you have a lot of fanboys and fangirls as... Yeah, I mean, we're, we're honestly open for anything. I mean, if you look at our, the projects that are on our slate, and there's some information on our website, right? We haven't, we've, we've revealed one project, which is a virtual reality project uh, centered around Stan Lee. And I don't know if you heard about that at all or... So, so we're doing a virtual reality interview series. Okay. And the whole idea is that we're capturing an intimate interview with Stan Lee, and, but we're capturing it in virtual reality so that when you put the goggles on, it's literally as close as technologically possible to be in the room with Stan Lee. And so the whole idea is like it's a really powerful opportunity because now you can take Stan Lee, who's got tens of millions of fans around the world, 99.99999% of which will never have the means or opportunity to meet with Stan in real life. Um, and so we're giving them that opportunity to come again as close as technologically possible. A um, hundred years from now, people will be able to sit down in a room with Stan Lee. I mean, how powerful is that? Like, what if you could go back in time and, you know, uh, spend an hour with William Shakespeare or Martin Luther King or, you know, the people that really shaped our world? Um, and so that's, that's, um, uh, that's the one project that we've announced. You know, the others, we're looking at television, we're looking at film, we're looking at web series. Um, and from a genre standpoint, it's literally all over the map. You know, I mean, definitely horror and sci-fi, um, you know, and fantasy are on our radar, you know, uh, and there's a lot of fans that like, you know, that, and there's a lot of economic reasons, like horror is a great example. Yeah. A lot of the reason why that, like, that's a great project for a small studio like us um, to uh, undertake because horror movies generally don't cost a lot of money. And, you know, if you have one that's a hit, you can potentially make a lot of money. So as a small emerging company, we can't finance the next Batman movie because it's just, it's so far out of our league. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, but we could, with some help, potentially finance a horror movie or maybe a low budget sci-fi or, or we could partner with somebody to do a much larger film. Like that's something that we're looking at as well. So um, the short answer to your question is we're all over the map. Like we're not about making superhero movies, you know, any more than we're, you know, about making any one particular type of movie. We're going to have a slate of probably five or ten projects going at any one time. And our hope is to have a true diversity, you know, of projects as far as the mediums, as far as the genres, as far as the characters and everything. Okay. And uh, do you consider yourself a fanboy? And if so, <laughs> what caused you to be one? Uh, that's a great question. I'm, I'm not like a hardcore fanboy of any one particular, you know, series. Maybe Star Wars would probably be, you know, the... The, the best. I mean, I was a, you know, I grew up, I was part of the Star Wars Generations. That was one of the first movies that I saw. I absolutely loved it. And, you know, I think the fact that they were able to reboot it, I love, and they did such a spectacular job, you know, and um, I love also the diversity of it, right? The fact that it's got a woman and an African-American leads, like that could have been two white guys, right? And uh, I love the fact that they made that decision, and I love the fact that that movie was so successful, you know? Um, and so, uh, anyway, but to me, what really drives me, like, I'm a fan of fanboys <laughs> and fangirls, right? Like, I love seeing people that are so passionate about that, and that's what I love about the whole Comic-Con community. You know, my last job was in the music community. And, you know, there's a lot of, like, too cool for school, right? Like, you can't be a fan of one genre, like alt-rock and country music, right? Those fan bit, like, they look down on each other, right? You know, whereas what I love about Comic-Con is I, you'll see people that are, like, into the most bizarre, strange things. And it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter what you're into and what I'm into. It's just the fact that we're into something and we're here. And it's such a wonderful, friendly, accepting culture that I, I just, like, I absolutely love it. <laughs> um, going back to the studio, um, yep. where do you see it in five years? That's a great question. Well, so our aspirational goal, our logo is the M with the bar over, which is the Roman numeral for one million. And that's because our long-term goal is to have one million shareholders in the Legion. Our belief is that, you know, I mean, if we were to do that, right now when people invest, the minimum investment is 100. The maximum, I mean, you know, some people put hundreds of thousands of dollars in, but you know, the average is probably about three or four hundred bucks, right? So if we can get a million fans on board, we would have three or four hundred million dollars worth of budget. And at that point, you can start talking about financing some serious films. Yeah. And but more importantly, we'd have a million sets of eyeballs, right? And if you've got an audience that large, there's literally nothing that you can do, right? There's no story that you can't tell. There's no risk that's too crazy. And so, so that's, that's our long-term, or that's our goal in five years. We would love to have, you know, a million fans and be a substantial enough force in Hollywood that we can, you know, have our pick of projects. And I think that with the fan base, the other great thing about it is, and like we see this with Stan Lee, right? Stan Lee is way out of our league. I mean, at the end of the day, we're a couple, you know, we're a small team. There's like five or six of us in our team. Um, we're bright and we've only been around for like six months. We haven't produced a single piece, a single project yet, you know, but Stan Lee is willing to work with us. And, you know, it's not because we're paying him a lot of money, <laughs> you know, we gave him some stock in the company. So he's, he's a part owner, right? But his upside is only if we're successful. If this company fails, he's not going to get anything out of it. But the ability to go to him and say, look, we're not like some international conglomerate. We are a group of your fans that want to do a project with you. You know, it's like, how can you say no to that, right? So when you look at like the top tier talent, the people that can do whatever they want, right? I think that that's a huge competitive advantage for us. You know, if we go to, I don't know, Tom Cruise or something, like what's the project that you always wanted to do? Right, but you couldn't, right? Because the studios wouldn't let it, or you know, maybe it's not commercial enough, or whatever the deal. Here's literally thousands. Right now, we're thousands. Hopefully, soon, hundreds of thousands or millions of your fans. Let's do it together. Like it's a really powerful proposition. And it's it's interesting because uh, you know, as a fan girl, um, you know, we're often fans of characters or of series mm -hmm. or franchises, but no one really thinks about the studio behind it. Like, mm -hmm. you know, yes. If it's, you know, universal legacy, whatever. Yes. So this is definitely a different spin. Yes. Uh, and a very smart move. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what is your biggest obstacle, if any, for this campaign and moving forward? Well, so 
our biggest obstacle for any company is just we're doing something that's never been done before, right? And that creates huge opportunities. You know, like I, I mentioned, Moby TV. You know, we were the first ones in the world to launch live television on your cell phone back in 2004 or 2003 at a time where literally a lot of big names in Hollywood told us that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. People are never going to watch TV on their cell phone, right? It's just like, <laughs> and and so you know, um, so doing something new is challenging, right? And but if you can succeed, and, and again, we've we've done this before, you know, uh, um, if you can succeed, the rewards, you know, financially, emotionally, all that sort of stuff, are just awesome. And so, I think that that's probably our biggest challenge. I mean, we're a startup company, right? You know, so you, you never have enough money, you never have enough hours in the day, you never have enough people on the team to accomplish all the stuff that you want to do. Um, Hollywood is an extremely competitive industry, right? There's a lot of money to be made if you do it right, but there's also a lot of competition. You know, there's a lot of people that are in it because of the money. There's a lot of people that are in it just because it's Hollywood, right? It's a passion-fueled industry. People are willing to do stuff for free. It's like music and video games. Like, you know, people um, will do it for free because they want to get their foot in the door because they want to be the next recording artist or the next movie star or, you know, whatever. And so, so anyway, so I think that those are probably the biggest challenges. But, um, you know, like I said, our this fundraising campaign succeeded beyond our wildest expectations, right? It was three months ago that we started it. And at that point, like, you know, like we thought it was awesome, <laughs> you know, but you face that magical point where you put yourself out there, right? You put your baby out there and people are either going to love it or they're going to hate it or they're going to ignore it, right? You know what I mean? And you got to face all the trolls that are going to come out and tell you what a terrible idea it is because of this, this, and that. And you're going to face you know, all the people that come in and love it. And, you know, we we oversubscribed it. So there were more people that wanted to get in than, than could, right? Because there's a $1 million cap. We couldn't, we're not legally allowed to raise any more in that, in that mechanism. And if you look at the, the progress, in the first month, we raised $200,000. In the next month, we raised $300,000. In the third month, we raised $700,000, right? So it's just like, it was exactly the sort of curve. And so, um, you know, we feel there's no question now that we're on to something, right? The fans are speaking and they're speaking with their dollars, <laughs> you know, and um, the energy and enthusiasm that we see within this community is amazing. We've got a private Facebook group that's only for investors and members of the Legion and it's so much energy, you know, from people that are creators or people that are just like super hardcore fans or people that are just like, I've never invested in anything before, but I figured what the heck, you know, I'm just excited to see where this goes. And so it's really, you know, we feel like, uh, like we could, you know, take over the world. <laughs> But that's today, right? I mentioned it's a startup. So today we're up here, and then tomorrow I'll be like, oh my God, what are we going to do? We're all going to die. <laughs> oh, I think, it'll, I think you guys will be okay. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll see. And uh, what is your process for choosing projects, or what will yes. be your process? Uh, well, so we're, we ex anticipate having a slate of five to ten projects at any one time, like I said, spanning different. Uh, mediums from VR, television, web, uh, feature film, um, all genres, you know. Um, and we look really, I mean, fundamentally it comes down to three things. Can we make money with this project, right? These aren't Kickstarter projects where you're doing it just because we want to make a great movie, right? The only projects that we would consider are ones where we believe that there's at least the potential for a good return on investment. And that's because you know we're not a donation. This isn't a charity, right? This is a business. And if you invest your hundred dollars in us, that's something we take very seriously. Like our goal is to turn that million dollars that we raised into two million dollars, and then ten million dollars, right? And so, um, also, if you're profitable, you get bigger. You get to take on more projects, and there's more great things that you can do. So, um, it's got to make money. But the second, and, and that's consistent with pretty much any business, right? The second one, though, is what really separates us, and that it's got to be fun, right? Because we are not owned by Wall Street investors. We're not owned by some international conglomerate. We are owned by fans, by, you know, geeks. And, <laughs> and, and part of our promise to those people is that we're going to take you along for the ride. And so we specifically look for projects where we can 
give you some sort of emotional return. You know, you're going to get some sort of aspect, or there's some way that you can contribute, or you know, a lot of creators love the idea of working with the fans on a project. Like, you know, and you know, maybe even I mean, it's it, it's kind of delicate, right? I mean, there's a reason why these people are paid to create content, and we all consume content. You know what I mean? So it's not a democracy. It's not like, hey, let's all the fans are going to write the story or anything like that. But, you know, we love the creative people, you know, a lot of them say, oh, well, this is really cool. Like, what if we, what if we, you know, raffled off a cameo in our film, you know, or what if we put something up to a vote, you know, or what if we, you know, crowdsource from the group, you know, one of the characters or something like that. You know, there's a lot of different ways that you can get the fans uh, involved, um, but still leave the creative guys in charge. And so those are the sort of creators that we want to work with. You know, I mean, it's a double-edged sword. And some some creators are like, no, you know, I, it's like this is my baby. I'm going to. I've got the vision. I'm going to create it. And that's fine too, as long as again, there's some way that we can bring the people into it and give them some sort of you know some sort of value beyond just the uh, financial. I mean, you can buy stock in Walt Disney Studios, yeah. right? And you may make or lose money based on that investment, but you probably don't get a lot of joy out of owning it. And that's what we want to give to you, is not just the financial, if this thing you know, is successful, you can make a lot of money, but even if it fails, like, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> so, so, so that's, and like I said, that's really different, not just for our company, but I mean, in the whole business kind of world. And it's only, I think, possible because of the Jobs Act. Right. Prior to this going through, all the companies that are out there are either private companies, which means they're owned by a one or a small handful of wealthy individuals, or they're public companies like Walt Disney. And um, public companies, because of the way the whole system is structured, they have to look solely at the bottom line. Right. That's and it's not because they're evil, but that's their fiduciary responsibility. Right. That's their legal responsibility is to look after the best interest of their investors. And because their investors are strictly investing from a financial standpoint to try and make money, that's what they need to do. And that's why sometimes, you know, these these studio like they seem greedy or they seem like they're doing things for the wrong reasons. And it's it's because that's what they were created to do. Whereas with the Jobs Act, it it. it created almost this brand, this, bland, this, ugh, this brand new paradigm where a company like us can raise money from a lot of people that's not necessarily driven solely by the bottom line. I can tell you right now that most of the people are not, you know, they'd rather that we do right, you know, than maximize, maximize the uh, financial return. So anyway, so those are, the, those are the, the two main criteria that we look, that we evaluate any project. And so we're looking to partner with established creators, right? We already have Stupid Buddy Studios, the guys behind Robot Chicken on board, um, Meltdown Comics, uh, 42 Entertainment, Alamo Draft House. Those are our, the allies that we've uh, announced so far. So we can go to those guys and say, hey, what's a project that you've always wanted to do that you couldn't for some reason? Let's finance that. So that'll be a big part of our slate is just partnering with established players. But the other thing that we want to do is um, there's a lot of creatives in the Legion, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of people that are drawn to the Legion either because, you know, they want to get into the industry, maybe they're a student studying film, you know, maybe they're, you know, like somewhere out there there's JK, another J.K. Rowling, right? A, a single mom, you know, that's got, you know, a dead-end job and is writing on the side and has the most amazing story to tell. And so, you know, there's a lot of people like that. There's a lot of people in our Legion that are in the industry but believe in what we stand for, right? And love this idea of a fan-owned company. And so because of that, we've got a lot of creatives in the Legion, and we would love nothing more than to find, you know, one of the, to break somebody, you know, from the Legion, you know? Uh, so we're gonna have, a, we're not taking submissions yet, but we'll take, we'll solicit submissions, you know, from the Legion and uh, have a process where, you know, people can submit ideas and we're gonna use the Legion to evaluate the ideas and then the cream of the crop will rise to the top. And, you know, we'd always like for some of our slate to be ideas that are sourced and coming, you know, from within the Legion. So that was a really long-winded answer to a very <laughs> simple question, but I hope I got to. Oh, that's fine. And uh, that was actually my last question. Any closing thoughts or? No, not that I can think of. Other than you know, like I said, so we 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 just closed our successful our seed round finance. Um, 
Um, I would encourage you or anybody who's interested, you can just go to thelegionm.com, which is our website. You can still sign up as a free member. And when you sign up as a free member, you get access to the free Facebook or the private Facebook group. You get access to a lot of the benefits, you know. Um, our goal is to make the Legion as large and inclusive as possible, and we're not fundraising right now. We will be again later this year, but even if you never wanted to invest, or you don't have the money, or it's just not your thing, like that's fine, right? You know, we, it's, it's, it's bigger than that. So we've got probably about 3,000 investors, but then we probably have another five or 6,000 people that are just members that are checking it out and being a part of it. And, you know, together we'll change Hollywood forever. <laughs> Oh, yeah. It was definitely a pleasure. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. It was a pleasure as well. <laughs> we good?